My guest today is Cassandra Ferris. Cassandra, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here at CodeMesh. Me too. Because uh, there's a lot of great people from the developer community. Yes, like, yes. Like Cassandra Ferris. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's my eighth or ninth Code Mash, and it's always a great time for learning, networking, and having a lot of fun. You have a, a passion for community events like this and just the community in general, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. I have the developer community to thank a lot for my career, for some of the things that I've learned over time, for some of the speaking opportunities I've been given, and just for kind of a lot of the help and support that you find through it. Oh, yeah, give me an example of that. Um, well, most recently, I'm on a job search, and over the years, I've gotten to know a number of people in the community, and so when I lost my most recent job, I put out on social media that I was in the market for a new job, and a whole bunch of people from the community reached out to me with leads, and I'm in the process of interviewing several places. Well, that's interesting. So uh, uh, this is this has happened to me before. You, you were um, networking with people. You were talking to people. You were generally being nice to people, mm -hmm. even though at that time... You weren't really looking for anything. You weren't. You were just enjoyed their company, and uh, you're a nice person. Um, and now, months later, years later, that's paying off. It's yeah. sort of a karma thing, right? Yep. And I didn't expect that. So I had, I was newer to tech about ten years ago, and just didn't have a lot of knowledge of at the time cloud computing was a newer thing, a few other things. So I started getting involved in the tech community just as a way to learn more mm. about technology, be able to have conversations okay. around it. To learn from your peers. Yes, learn from my peers, exactly. And then a few years into that, over time, I started to feel like I wanted to give back to the community that I'd learned so much from. And so mm. I started thinking about the stuff I knew that I could speak on and talk about and maybe benefit people in the community. So ah, so you're a, you're a speaker at tech conferences yes. now. Yes. What, what kind of things do you speak on? The human side of tech. Uh-huh. So well, give me an example. Uh, personal branding. Mm -hmm. You did that one yesterday, or was it yesterday? Two days ago. Mm -hmm. No, yesterday was a workshop on figuring out your career path. Ah, okay. Um, I, I've done the personal branding talk several times. Okay. I do one on mental health, the process of building a network, how to interview team members, um, starting to move into some more communication-focused okay. talks as well. Okay, so these aren't, the, the, the material in your, in your presentations aren't technical topics, but they are targeted at technical people, is that right? Yes, that's right. right. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take these kind of vague, fuzzier topics and figure out a process to put around them. So mm -hmm. for example, in the personal branding talk, I talk a whole lot about having a brand and networking, but I, in the midst of it, give people like three different areas they can consider as they're starting to figure out their own brand and kind of explain the process of brainstorming your brand, building it, and then taking your personal brand online into the offline world. Oh, very cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the developer community. Can you define that term? A lot of people don't know what that means. Yeah, so to me the developer community is, it's all of the technologists and technical professionals that come to conferences, come to user groups, come to events. A lot of them are community leaders, they're organizers, speakers, but the people who just attend these events are also part of the community. They're here, they're learning, they're growing, they're challenging themselves. So Yeah, you think they're here for the same reasons that you are, the, the, the networking and uh, the learning from their peers, or is there more truth than that? I'm sure there's some that are like their boss sent them here and they had to be here, <laughs> okay. or just because the Code Mash is a fun week, but I know a lot of people are here for learning and networking. Uh -huh. um, and you're a speaker, uh, but you're also <clears throat> an organizer, right? Yes. Yes, I am president of a conference called Dog Food Con. Dog Food Con. I yes, like yes. Plays on the old Microsoft term, eating your own dog food, okay. using your own products. Over the years, that conference has evolved from a free one-day conference in the Microsoft office into a two-day 450-person um, conference with something like 90 talks, keynotes. I added a full human skills track to it a few years ago, mm -hmm. some social events, so... And then as Microsoft has gone more open source, we've started to do more open source integration talks. Wow. So that's mostly a Microsoft-focused conference, even though the, they've handed it off to you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier, before we started filming, you were telling me about um, <clears throat> you actually had a, a, a whole interview cycle here at CodeMatch one time, right? Tell me about that. Yes. So I'd been working for a staffing company at the time, and that company was actually not very supportive of my community efforts. Mm -hmm. And so... I eventually decided it was time for me to move on and take on a new, A, some new challenges, B, work somewhere that was more supportive of my community efforts. 
and through helping organize a different conference that was called Cloud Develop, it was a cloud computing conference, mm -hmm. I'd made friends with somebody who's now the president of a consulting company. And we hung out at the conference, we hung out afterwards, and we stayed in touch on social media. So a few months later, he sends me a message and says, hey, we're going to be hiring a recruiter. And at the time, I was doing recruiting. And we're hosting a party at CodeMash. Will you come to this party? And I'm like, absolutely. I'll be at CodeMash. I'd love to be there. CodeMash party? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to ask me twice. Exactly. So I later found out that they had actually invited five potential candidates to this party let us loose in a room full of developers just to see how we interacted. It was a secret job interview. <laughs> it was. And it was kind of a brilliant move because that company sponsors a lot of events, a lot of parties, a lot of user groups and things. And so it was a good way for them to see somebody who would have to be doing that in their day job. How are they going to handle this? Uh -huh. So I wound up so standing. You got the job? Yes. Yes. After standing in the kitchen talking about mobile apps with somebody all okay. night. <laughs> you no. didn't hide in the corner. No, no. <laughs> And I didn't stick with, like, I was, I'm not a hands-on technologist, but I understand a lot of technology. Yeah. And so I was learning kind of, he was talking about kind of the design and interface of optimal mobile apps. It's a fascinating conversation. So mm -hmm. that, That's a good story. That's like, yeah. you're, again, you're, you're just doing what you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, people see that as a cultural fit and networking at yeah. community events like this is a great way to, to, to build that network where yeah. let people know about that. Um, tell me a little about the, the personal branding, because I think you've done a really good job of uh, branding yourself, and the people in the community know who you are. It's not by accident. Yes. It was by accident at first. Really? It was, initially, I was just curious about tech, again, wanted a way to learn, so I started going to events, and then a friend of mine who's a developer had been tweeting about something called CodeMash. And I'm like, what is this? Uh -huh. Oh, it's a coding conference. Uh -huh. So I set up a search on Twitter to just follow everything people were saying about CodeMash, and I followed all of those people. Uh -huh. I hope I was one of them. <laughs> you probably <laughs> were. That might be how you came on my radar. Um, and this was years ago, like probably eight years ago or yeah. so. And so through that, I just started kind of sitting back and listening and or reading what people were saying. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I got a little bit more confident and started chit-chatting with some people through Twitter mm -hmm. and then started talking to people in person because by then I'd been to some events and stuff where I met people that I met on Twitter. Like I'll never forget I was at a dot net holiday party and somebody had followed on Twitter for years and I happened to be standing for next to each other. And I was like, Hey, you're and I said his Twitter handle and he's like, Yeah, you're Cassandra Ferris. So it was a fun thing. Um, That's happened to me many times. Yes. You and I actually use our real names on Twitter. Yes, we do. Everybody does. Yeah, which is, it can be good um, to do that. So from there, I started to realize that that was a way that I could actually connect with people. And so I started to be a little bit more purposeful about who I was following. Like at the time, I'd followed a bunch of like food bloggers and local businesses and stuff. I unfollowed all of them. And most of my Twitter stream is technology with a heavy dose of Columbus Crew soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Jocks and nerds. I know, right? I like yep, <laughs> yep. Soccer and board games. Um, well, congratulations on keeping the crew in Columbus. Thank you. Yes, we saved our crew. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, over time, I just started being more deliberate about who I followed and then finding ways to help the people I was following. So somebody would tweet and ask about advice or ask mm -hmm. about something and I would help them if it was something that I knew about or I would periodically just put out tips and advice those eventually became talks and that became a whole thing. So it was accidental. And then I realized, oh, I can be purposeful about my brand. I can be purposeful about what I talk about on social media and through that start to build my network. So that's when you started to build a process around this. Yes, exactly. Uh, using what you'd yeah. been doing that was working. Yeah. More the, of what works and less yeah. of what doesn't. Yeah. I, that's kind of a, one of the recurring themes, I think, and I'm thinking about it, especially in light of the career path workshop I just taught is... A lot of times in our careers, we let stuff just happen. Yes. And we think it's just happenstance. And so we don't take the time to invest in ourselves and step back and think through what is our next career move. Or even when I was thinking through how I wanted to brand myself, I kind of sat back and thought about what type of message I wanted to convey, what I wanted to do. But it's just, it. I think especially because in our industry, we get so focused on learning the latest tech and the latest methodology, we forget to learn kind of the human side of things and okay. learn, 
you know, sit back and think about, well, what, what do I want to do with my career and sit back and reflect on those things and mm -hmm. act on them. Uh, so, well, let's talk specifics here. Then what's, what do you tell people to do if they want to take control of their career and of their brand? Um, so taking control of the brand, a lot of it is kind of, I tell people to sit back and think about areas that they're interested in professionally and things that they like to do or that they're good at professionally. Think about some of their personal hobbies and I think an effective personal brand, it is a personal brand. So I think that you need to have some of a personal element. It doesn't have to be all about work on the things you share on social media. So you sit back and kind of think through what are the things that I'm passionate about professionally and personally, and then think about what do I have in common with other people. Okay. And from there you start, you can use, you can do things like LinkedIn groups. For me, I tend to use Twitter hashtags mm -hmm. to figure out who I'm following on social media, but then you just find people who have those things in common. From there, you can just sit back and kind of listen and read and kind of lurk a little bit until you find places where you can talk and open conversations, and that's when it becomes really effective. Okay, so a lot of the relationships that you built started on social media, it sounds like. Yes. And then I, they moved to the real world, as yes. opposed to the other way around. Yep, um, back in my recruiter days, I was up to like 10 people I'd hired mm -hmm. through Twitter. Oh, yeah. Um, one fun story, so there was somebody I'd followed for years on Twitter, and he and I had a dual interest in psychology, technology and um, soccer ah. and we would tweet at each other he lives in Toledo I live in Columbus and then I met Code Mash sitting in the hot tub and he sits down next to me and I'm like I think I know who you are and he's like <laughs> I think I know who you are year and a half later he's looking for a job and who does he come to nice so and you hired him yes <laughs> and I hired him and he's really happy and Actually, be catching up with him later tonight. So I will tell you a story okay. um, that I think you'll appreciate. Uh, one day, I was looking for a job, and I told my friend Josh. Josh is—I'm uh, sure you know Josh. He used to live around here, and he knew everybody. He's one of those guys, just really well connected. And he—I uh, was at a party one time, and as the party was ending, he introduced me to his friend Brian, whom you also know. And he said, hey, Brian, this is David. David's looking for work, and I think he'd be great for your company. And I said, hello, Brian. And he said, hello, David. And we shook hands, and the elevator doors opened, and that was my job interview. We separated. The next day, his, his company called me and offered me a job. That's awesome. On, uh, just because Josh had said I should. Yeah, it that was, helps. <laughs> it was yep. all about networking and community. Yes. And, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that that had never happened to me before. Yeah. I thought I had to send a resume and go through a bunch yeah. of interviews. No, I haven't sent a resume. The only, even on this current job search, the only resume I've sent was with a large company that required a resume. Everything else has been, hey, talk to Cassandra. Uh, she'd be great in developer relations and product evangelism roles. And so those are kind of where I'm interviewing and talking right now. Very cool. I just realized I've been saying her name wrong all these years. Oh, no worries. <laughs> Cassandra. <laughs> yeah, Cassandra. I like it better. <laughs> Uh, very cool. So uh, let's, um, uh, we tend to forget, you know, if we come to places like Code Mesh, we forget that there's a lot of people that are developers that are not in the developer community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. For, uh, if you, that's not a passion of yours. But some people just aren't aware of it. Um, and they think, wow, this is great. Uh, I want to get part of this. Yeah. What do you tell those people? Um, and I'm going to steal this from a friend, mm -hmm. um, a friend of ours, Michael. He's a fellow conference speaker, conference organizer, and he did a lightning talk yesterday on getting involved in the developer community hmm. and put a process around it. And he was talking about how, and I think maybe this is exactly what I did without thinking about it, I started going to user groups are a great place to start. They're small, they're intimate. Yes, you're walking into a room full of strangers, but all of those strangers are interested in the same thing as you. Yeah, you immediately got something in common with them. Exactly. And so from there, it can start by just at the end of the event, thanking the organizer, going up and introducing yourself, mm -hmm. and offering to help. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I mean, you know this too as a leader, like we're always looking for people to help organize yeah. our stuff. And it can be something as simple as, you know, sharing something on social media, or I don't know, if you work for a company that sponsors things, being the person that buys the pizza for the user group. Right. And that's a way to get started and get networked in it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, step one's just showing up. Um, in order to find opportunities, a lot of it is doing research. I rely really heavily on Columbus has this amazing, busy technology community, and our meetup site has a lot of opportunities. So yeah, Columbus is a great developer community. Yes. Yes, it does. 
So putting people on to Meetup is kind of my first piece of advice. Meetup. Com. Yeah, Meetup.com. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Uh, should, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I don't think so. Cassandra, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, oh, before you go, actually, you're looking for work. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, people can get a hold of me on Twitter at Cassandra Ferris. My email is Cassandra.Ferris at Gmail. Uh, everything's Cassandra Ferris. So, right. but I'm going to break yeah. the fourth wall. Yeah. Hire Cassandra. <laughs> She's awesome. Aww, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> A lot of times I said I have a background in recruiting and people ask me what my career advice boils down to. And a lot of times I boil it down to learn stuff, meet people and help them. And that's how you grow your career. But one of the cool side benefits of all of this is through being so involved in our developer community, being so involved in our technology community, I've actually made a lot of friends who are some of the closest friends I have in life.